it's pouring rain. Crazy, it's cold and windy. What's up? It's Dmitry from Flex RC. So I was working on a few designs recently and I wanted to show you one to discuss it a little bit in advance and see what you think about it. So new design is based on uh, S and cage design. The special feature of this design is that it is using extra narrow arms. It's using lower cage and it's specifically targeting 16 by 16 electronics. So the goal is to have extra light, 2.5 inch quadcopter. I was specifically designing it to work with my 1102 motors, uh, which nicely fit here. And they should have more than enough of uh, power in order to carry this model around. And we will see it in the test flights. It also supports motors like 0703, 0705, and whatever people will come up with. It has this three pole mount, which is implemented as cutouts. And they go all the way up to 9 millimeters. M2. You should be able to mount most of them here. We do have now two and a half inch propellers available and 55 and 60 millimeter propellers for one millimeter shaft motors. So they all have to work nicely with this frame. You see 55 millimeters has plenty of clearance as well as uh, two and a half inch propeller has plenty of clearance too. My new design uses X layout which allows me to align carbon fibers really well along the arms which adds a lot of rigidity and makes uh, this frame much much stronger than with other alignment of carbon fibers. x light also allows you to have much more stable flight characteristics of your quadcopter. The frame is uh, two millimeters thick. Space in the cage is up to 18 millimeters. Okay, let's put it on the scales and see what's the weight of it. And the weight of the frame is 10 gram 46 milligram, which is approximately the same weight as Ascent 2 inch. The other weight savings is possible only by reducing thickness of uh, the cage, which I didn't really want to do because if you crash hard like that, you can break it and uh, then damage your electronics. And we really want to avoid that. Another feature of the frame is that it uses extra large borders for the motors, which means that your motor is fairly well protected in case of the crash. When it lands, it most likely won't uh, hit the motor itself. And here it is. Please welcome brand new Slim X 2.5 inch quadcopter. Since it was a prototype and I wanted to try as many as I can of new components to see what will be the best fit for Slim X, it took me a few days in order to finalize it. And I would like to show you a few parts I've tried and uh, what I've chosen at the end. I've got these guys uh, laying around for a while, so I wanted to give it a go. It is Happy Model Super SF4 flight controller and speed controller stuck and uh, I was really happy about it because it all kind of plug and play you pretty much just solder motors and then uh, that's about the trouble I can think of but it was just the beginning of the story and you can see I've got a few of them here which uh, didn't really work for me <laughs> obviously I suck at assembling drones so uh, the first um, mishap happened when I built it everything and then I was trying to bind um, a first sky receiver and I kind of pushed on the bind button and then I plugged in battery and it shorted everything. <laughs> so first uh, I burned one set and what was interesting that I was trying to investigate what exactly was burned and it was um, 
speed controller, which I didn't expect. Usually a speed controller survives and you burn flight controller, but in this case it was a bit opposite. Since I always buy a few of the same parts in order to have spares, which I strongly suggest you to do with this hobby because even the most experienced builder may, can make a mistake. So second attempt was that I picked new flight controller and new speed controller and everything seemed fine. I went ahead and covered everything with um, conformal coating. I've tested everything and all went great. Then on a maiden flight speed controller got burned. I don't know why is that. I felt maybe it's too much amps which didn't really make sense since it's supposed to be 6 amps and you will hardly go over for 6 amps unless you maybe push it uh, full throttle with really heavy battery or something like that so it was an, another mishap oh i almost forgot before that i had another problem when uh, my buzzer was constantly beeping like beep i had no idea what's going on then i switched to another flight controller from another uh, Super S stock and uh, it was fine. So okay so uh, after i burned a uh, second um, speed controller in a row I decided to go ahead with uh, my favorite uh, proven to work well Cicada 5A speed controller which we sell on our website and uh, then I thought I'm going to use this uh, flight controller since uh, nothing seemed to be wrong with it. Then I decided to use the same uh, wiring diagram which I used with Tiny F3 flight controller we sell and Cicada because speed controller supports 1 and 2S batteries and flight controller is only two S batteries. I went ahead and used Polulu and fed it into five volts on the flight controller and then battery connected uh, the regular way. The first hint for the possible troubles was when I connected USB and uh, actually speed controller uh, got initialized and I was able to spin motors uh, just <laughs> while it we were connected to USB. I kind of like thought wow that's a really cool feature and I connected battery. <laughs> of course uh, I've got white smoke. So I was happy that I had uh, my uh, favorite Tiny F3 with OSD flight controller handy and I've decided just to fall back to it and use a proven method which worked for many quadcopters I built. Then also another component I uh, used at first was uh, VM275 uh, uh, which is a nice uh, little video transmitter uh, but the video signal wasn't as clear as I would like. Then I decided to fall back to Rankam TX200 which I really love actually because I think it's really underappreciated video transmitter because the video signal is just so nice especially when you have with what to compare. Uh, obviously probably there are better solutions but it's just almost as light as this one and um, just nothing else to say it's like so nice and yeah another, another benefit of it is that it doesn't really have any voltage regulator on it and uh, it makes it so much easier to use with 1S builds because if you have additional uh, voltage regulators what they do they overload system a little bit and then you can have brownouts and especially when you run from 1S you don't really want another unnecessary consumers of the power so uh, let's see video just to get an idea with uh, this video transmitter and uh, then we'll compare with Runcam X200. So another part I went with at first was FXT T81 micro video camera uh, which is actually very nice and it's uh, so small that because I'm using cage I had to make an adapter which adds a little bit of weight to it and uh, I'm going to show you a short video of it as well. Okay, let's look a bit closer at uh, Slim X 2.5 inch uh, quadcopter I've built. 
I've designed specifically for it uh, the canopy in order to make it uh, nice and covered and protected. It has a couple of holes for the antennas. It has a, a mount for the buzzer which sits inside and then there is a hole for sound to come through. Uh, then it has a cutout at the back uh, with a little bit of an arc for the antenna which can come from uh, the rear side and uh, in my case I have USB port at the back uh, of the quadcopter and it's uh, helping me to exit it easier blah 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 let's just put it on a scale it won't be as light as i would want it to be but even with that it handles really nice even on one as battery so the total weight is approximately 56 you don't really have to use this canopy because it weights a little bit so I just removed it to show it to you without it. You see, I have a camera here and uh, then I added standoff and then you see how strong it is. It's kind of like, you cannot really do, you cannot really remove it, you cannot pull it out like this. It's a really solid setup. Let's put it on a scale. Okay, so the weight of it without canopy is approximately 52 grams. So we lost approximately how much? Like four gram and something. Uh, which is uh, not too bad actually just for one piece and for those of you who remember I've built uh, SM2 inch with uh, pretty much the same setup same components the motors um, just two inch and uh, let's compare the weight to get an idea and the weight is uh, 51.6 gram isn't it the same as just weight the Slim X? No, it's like Slim X, 20 milligram heavier, but it is 2.5 inch. Can you imagine? Like it's just wow. I mean, even I myself kind of impressed. It's uh, same weight and uh, bigger props. To be fair, I was flying a lot this SM2 inch with this setup, and uh, it was one of my favorite flyers. It's really nice. Just Slim X offers you much more power with the same weight, so efficiency is much higher in this case. To be fair, SN2 inch is designed for bigger motors like 1106, and uh, Slim X is designed for mostly 1102, 1103 motors, so it is designed to be 1 to S flyer, not like 4S or anything like that. Okay, let's talk about the components I've used, which I really like. And I can highly recommend any of these parts. And first of all, it is Predator Micro, which is a really nice camera. The great thing about it, that it has really nice day performance and really acceptable night performance. Second part is the new FR Sky Nano Receiver from Full Speed. It's really nice, you know, for the size. It's uh, pretty much like U-Sky but it integrates bind button which makes it much easier to use and the range seems to be fine i didn't fly too far away because i just fly kind of within my neighborhood but i'm really happy with it so far and we are going to stock it on website soon actually third component i really enjoy and uh, i do recommend it for light builds like this one is uh, rank cam tx 200 i do think it has really clear picture really strong signal for the size weight and price you get really a good deal in my opinion and then <laughs> it's kind of silly i wish there were more solutions for one to s drones but doesn't seem like there are too many if any at all which work nice this is why i really enjoy my tiny f3 with osd flight controller which is 16 by 16 mount it's really cool flight controller it works from 2 to 3s so in order to use it with 1s you kind of have to boost it with palulu uh, i'm fine with that obviously i will prefer if it was just one to two s but again i didn't find any better of 16 by 16 flight controller so far another part is speed controller obviously and it is cicada 5 amps four in one speed controller i didn't have uh, any troubles with it whatsoever and uh, cicada speed controllers are known to be really reliable and nice and then last part of this quadcopter is flex rc FX 1102 12,500 motors, which are really the jam, I would say, and uh, because the amount of power they produce on 1 and 2S is just incredible. At the same time, amps are pretty low and they are so smooth and quiet. Like the special feature of this drone and why I was actually designing it, 
I like to fly in my neighborhood, so it is basically within residential area. I want to be able to fly it at night as well. So anything loud won't really work. And with this setup, it's so quiet, you cannot really hear it from you. Two meters from you, you cannot hear. It's quite actually remarkable in my opinion. Well, obviously, you know, since it's my product, I might be biased, but just try yourself, tell me if I'm wrong. I will take my words back. Okay, so it's probably everything I wanted to say about uh, my new design Slim X 2.5 inch and let's look at a few more FPV clips and get a better idea about what it can do. Alright, thank you very much for watching my overview of Slim X. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment below and let me know what do you think about it. If you have any considerations, feedback, anything, just share it. I really would like to hear it. And I hope to see you soon. See ya!